We welcome you to the National Sports Center Stadium in Blaine, Minnesota, as match day 13 in MLS Next Pro rolls along. This evening, it's the second meeting of the year between Whitecaps FC2 and Minnesota United 2. So glad you can be with us tonight. Justin Galanti, our whole crew with you here on MLSNextPro.com. A look at the Western Conference table, which is extremely congested in the middle. You see Minnesota in 11th place at 16 points, but only four points out of the fifth place tie that currently sees San Jose and Tacoma level with one another. It's been a wonderful start to the year though for Whitecaps FC2, third place and with a good result tonight, could perhaps move up even more in that Western Conference table. These two teams met back in April. It was a 5-2 decision in favor of Vancouver. Match was level 2-2 at halftime, and then Whitecaps scored all three goals in the second half to walk out with the three points, did that at home. They're hoping for a similar performance on the road. Minnesota hopeful to take care of business on their home field here tonight. On the year, just one, two, and one at home. They were not able to play at home until May but now have a good stretch of home matches coming up. Starting 11s tonight, starting with the home side, Cameron Knowles is the head coach for Minnesota. They are without their leading scorer tonight, Diogo Pacheco, a little nicked up with an injury. So this is how they go with Dunbar and Lacey up top. Iwe, Bo, O'Driscoll, Bello in the middle, Mosquera, Uche, Rodas, and Leatherman in the back. And Alex Smear gets his first start of the year in goal. First start for anyone not named Fred Emmings for Minnesota, who had started the prior 12 matches this year. On the Vancouver side, Ricardo Clark is the head coach. He has Thomas Hassel in goal for the third time this year. Hassel last year spent a good portion of the season as the starter for the first team. Ba, Campania, Dasovic, and Illich in front of him. Fry, Johnston, and Johnson in the midfield. Levante Johnson, the leading scorer for Vancouver. Habibula, Hansen, and Koopland up top for Vancouver, which again is 7-4-3 to start this year. 26 points, which is third in the West. Minnesota trying to start moving its way up the table as we get set to get underway this evening at the National Sports Center. Minnesota playing at home, as we said, for just the fifth time this year. This stadium has a bubble dome on it until the end of April, so they were not able to play at home for the first six matches, six in a row on the road, to start the year, and they've been in a a bit of a difficult run of form lately. Have not earned a point in any of their last three matches, 0-0 and 3, and they've conceded 12 goals in that span. On the air, Minnesota is giving up the most goals in all of MLS Next Pro, 31 this year in 12 matches. So that is something that Cameron Knowles, as you might guess when we talked with him this week, really wanted to shore up. He said, We've done a lot of really good things this year, but you can't ignore the fact that we've given up 31 goals to this point. They've scored 26, which is fourth in the league out of the 27 clubs entering the weekend. But the mix of fourth in scoring and last in defense has left them sort of in the middle of the Western Conference at the moment. Foul here will keep it going in this direction. On the Vancouver side, a bit of a quick turnaround after a match on Thursday night at home against Salt Lake. That was a 1-0 victory in the fourth time in Vancouver's last eight matches that it has not allowed a goal. 50% rate of clean sheets 
over the last eight, which Ricardo Clark is very happy with, of course. Solid tackle there by Vasco Fry in Vancouver on the move. Trying to move into transition. Ball comes forward onto the foot of Johansson, and he earns the first corner of the night for Vancouver, which is in the white kit on the road. It is the home all gray for Minnesota here. It's great speaking with both head coaches this week. Ricardo Clark, assistant with the first team the last two years, now the head coach of this next pro side, and he's loving the new challenge that is on his plate. See what his group can do with this initial set piece of the evening. It's a low ball that's cleared away quickly over the sideline, and it will be another throw now for Vancouver. For the most part, Ricardo Clark, he said, has been happy with the way this year has gone. Results have obviously been in, in their favor more often than not. Happiest with the defense, as you might guess. Says they can be better offensively in a couple aspects of their game. The buildup, having more possession and creating more chances in front of goal, but he felt like in their last match against Salt Lake, they did create a good number of chances in front of goal. The lone goal in that match was from Levante Johnson in the 56th minute. And that proved to be the winner. It was Johnson's sixth of the year. Official having a conversation after that last foul committed by Emmanuel Ewe, the 22-year-old for Minnesota, played in 16 matches last year for MNUFC2, and he's starting for the 10th time this year. These two teams were pretty much right next to each other in the Western Conference table a year ago. Vancouver finished seventh with 32 points, and Minnesota in a tie for eighth with 31 points. Off the turnover, big opportunity early for Minnesota, but Cameron Lacey's shot was stopped by Hassel, and his first touch of the night is an early save. Hassel, his coach described him as one of the most professional players he's ever been around, especially for a young guy, still just 23 years of age. Again, last year, a starter on the first team for a good amount of time. A little dangerous chance in the box for a moment for Minnesota, but Zayden Bello couldn't quite control it. The first team for Vancouver went a little more veteran at the goalkeeper spot this year, so Hassel has gotten some opportunities at the next pro level. This is his third start of the year, all of them coming in June. His coach was saying, you know, when he came down to us, wasn't exactly in great form, really had not played in three or four months in a game prior to that June 2nd start. But feels like he's come along really nicely and he's getting back into good form. This will be a throw coming for Minnesota. Again, without its leading scorer tonight, and Diogo Pacheco, who has six goals and four assists this year. So not only leads the team in goals, but also assists. We'll see how they generate opportunities tonight without Pacheco. Minnesota has not played since last Sunday. A 4-1 loss at home against Houston. They've given up exactly four goals in each of their last three matches and 21 goals over the last six, which is a goals against average of three and a half. that foul, it'll be a free kick for Juan Mosquera, making his eighth start, 11th appearance this year. Mosquera, 20 years old, on loan from Colombia. Played three matches last year with this side and has been a huge contributor this year. Would step forward 
Maybe a little too much contact and a foul on Vasco Fraud. Cameron Knowles, the head coach for Minnesota, described the season overall, the broad view is that things have been all right. Obviously, the, the last three matches have not gone well for Minnesota, but he said for him and his staff, it's really important to stay positive and not act like the sky is falling after three fairly sizable defeats over the last couple weeks. And he said, overall, the frustrating thing is for the most part, he feels like the group is playing very well. There have just been a couple key moments that have really let them down that they need to shore up. One of those matches that followed that script was the first between these two teams. Back on April 23rd, 2-2 two -two at half, ended up a 5-2 win for Vancouver. Ricardo Clark called that one of his team's best performances, said it was fi firing on all cylinders that night and deserved to win. But both coaches expected a very different match here tonight, particularly because of a couple of first team guys for Vancouver that played that night are not available this evening. Debar, Debar Caicedo, who had a goal and an assist that night, and JC Gando, who also had a big impact that evening, including an assist. So a very different looking group for Vancouver coming into tonight. Also a group that's dealing with some injuries. So a little bit lighter on players and also playing for the third time in nine days here tonight. Started this stretch against Austin, a 1-0 defeat, then got the 1-0 win. Mosquera plays it towards the middle. Cameron Lacey had it taken away from him by Fry, who was asking for a foul as well. As you can see his, or someone's boot is off. I'm not sure if it's Fry's or not, but he picked it up. Still has it in his left hand, and he's trying to figure out who to give it to. Yeah, it is his, his left boot has come off and finally able to get it back on. Nine and a half minutes gone by in our first half here at the National Sports Center in Blaine, Minnesota. So glad you're with us here this evening on an absolutely jam-packed night of MLS Next Pro action. Vancouver moving forward once again. This is Joe Hansen trying to play it towards the middle, but Jeremy Rodas, the Honduran defender, was able to clear out of trouble. Nice build up here for Minnesota. Good opportunity. Cameron Dunbar with the left foot off the post. What an opportunity for Cameron Dunbar. Hassel might have gotten a piece of it as well. Nearly a breakthrough goal early here for Minnesota. Yeah, Hassel got it perhaps with the right hand and then off the post and over the sideline. And Dunbar, who is starting and appearing in his third match this year for MNU FC2, was bidding for his third goal. Cameron Knowles said that with the first team on international break at the moment, Dunbar asked if he could play tonight. That's the kind of buy-in that players in the organization have in Minnesota. On the other side, one thing that Ricardo Clark pointed out to me this week was his group needs to be better at the start of matches. They've conceded too many early goals this year and nearly gave up another there. Another free kick coming. This is Rory O'Driscoll who was signed this past March after four collegiate, collegiate seasons at New Hampshire. He had the lone goal in the 4-1 defeat against Houston last Sunday. O'Driscoll puts it on target and easily handled by Hassel. And Hassel took a little contact there. 
you can hear in our crowd mic the challenge coming from the sideline. Vancouver was asking for a foul there. Instead, they get one a bit further down the pitch. Antoine Couplin gets around one defender. Couplin still with it to his right foot, plays it in front. No one was there for it. Still in a dangerous area, though. This is Johnson playing it back for Alaj Ba. Good step forward, though, by Mosquera to win the ball for Minnesota. Dangerous chance there, but Vancouver was just unable to connect on the final ball. Now Emmanuel Iwe back the other way for Minnesota. Good up and down action here in the first half. Zaydan Bello into the box. It's loose there. And Fry was able to at least get it as high up in the air to wait for some support. Now Levante Johnson with it. And Johnson is called for the foul. He's gotten some first team experience in his first professional season. So we take another look back at this run made by Coupland. And just no one there. There was so much space, but Malcolm Johnston couldn't quite get to it. He was the closest to that ball. To finish on Levante Johnson played at four different schools for one year. Eastern Florida State, Salt Lake Community College, Seattle University, and then most recently at Syracuse where he helped the Orange win a national championship this year. 29th pick in the most recent MLS Super Draft and having a wonderful first professional season between Vancouver's next pro side as well as the first team where he's gotten some opportunities. Ricardo Clark said those are the stories we want to be able to tell. Players who contribute for us and are able to move up to the first team have an impact there. Very offensive affair the last time these two played, as we said. See if we get the same thing tonight. There have been some chances early, but no goals to this point. Ball in front, opportunity, and Hassel got it pinned between his legs. It was Cameron Lacey breaking in once again. And Hassel not only stopped it, but it kind of sandwiched in between his legs so there was no loose change to be cleaned up. Back the other way, a chance, a foul in the box perhaps. The official blew the whistle, we'll see what the call is here. It's going to be a yellow against Minnesota's CC Uche. And still waiting for an indication here of where that foul occurred. It looks like it, it should be a PK coming for Vancouver. Uche still unhappy with the call and it will be a PK coming. A wonderful ball over the top. Johnson able to run it down and it's gonna be a huge opportunity now for Vancouver to take the lead. I'm not sure if the complaint from Uche was whether or not it was a foul or where the foul occurred. But either way, Levante Johnson now with a big opportunity for his seventh goal of the year, which leads the team. And Alex Smear playing for the first time this season for this team is the one trying to stop him. Former Syracuse Orange against a former North Carolina Tar Heel here. Levante Johnson, stopped by Smear. He's got a rebound and didn't get much on it. 
Alex Smear comes up huge and keeps this match scoreless. And now Minnesota back the other way with some speed. How about Alex Smear? Thrust into his first appearance tonight. And what an early impression he's able to make on this match. Guessed right and stopped Johnson cold. Smear played eight matches last year with MNUFC2 after being picked 62nd overall out of North Carolina in the 2022 MLS Super Draft. Foul here against Minnesota. Tonight's broadcast is presented by Alina Health, official healthcare provider of MNU FC2. 18 minutes gone by in what's been a very entertaining first half. No score so far. By the way, this June, MLS Next Pro is happy to celebrate Pride Month and support our LGBTQ fans and community. The beautiful game is for everyone. Here's Johnson once again, cross into the middle and just past Cameron Habibula, who was streaking in, couldn't quite get a touch on it. Back into the box it comes, it's in a dangerous spot. Popped up into the air. Still unable to clear his Minnesota, Habibula's got it back. On the back heel pass, it comes to Coupland. Coupland firing for Johnson on the back post, couldn't put it on target. Still in play, and Minnesota finally able to clear it. Vancouver continuing to threaten, but MNUFC2 holding strong defensively. Hoopland again with some space to operate. He's already created a couple chances. Beautiful move there. Copeland wins a corner. Good start to this match for Antoine Copeland. As we take another look at that stop on the PK for Alex Smear. Guessed right. Beautiful stop. And Johnson couldn't quite get enough on the rebound. Rodas was in there to clear it out anyway. And it remains a 0-0 match to this point. Not one that has been void of chances though. Second corner for Vancouver this evening. It's Kuplin to take it. A high ball to the back post, but Smear is there. And that opportunity is thwarted. Emmanuel Iwe splits a couple defenders now. Tries to send one forward for a sprinting Cameron Lacey, but Hassel was out to get it. Shots are 3-2 to this point in favor of Minnesota. Possession just about 50-50. Possession was something that Ricardo Clark pointed out is something his team could improve on as the season goes along. Vancouver at the moment, if you're wondering where they sit in the league, in some of the statistical categories, they're tied for seventh in goal scoring entering the weekend and tied for 10th in goals allowed. So very solid in both aspects of the game. This is Eway though, breaking in with space, crosses it in, it's still loose. And it's just outside the post. It'll be a corner for Minnesota. They were hoping for a penalty, but don't get the call. Mm, this match has had some of everything so far. Eway, a great ball to the middle. And that is deemed to be a clean challenge. And instead of a penalty, it's a corner for Minnesota. Home side has been very dangerous 
in the counter game so far tonight. Low ball is cleared easily. Minnesota keeping possession though. Cameron Dunbar had that great chance earlier but a bit strong on his initial touch and Darko Illich sends it over the sideline. Good to see him back tonight. Illich has been dealing with some injuries of late, making just his third appearance and second start of the year after signing with the Vancouver organization in March after previously playing in Germany. Somebody that the coaching staff is very excited about and happy to see back out on the pitch. Zaydan Bello with it now. And he wins another corner. Bello in his first year with Minnesota after signing in December. Previously played for Melbourne Victory in Australia. Once again, it's Dunbar here for Minnesota. A good ball, and Smear, or I should say Hassel, leapt up, grab it, and now tries to start playing the other way. Cameron Habibula has some support. Habibula still on the ball. Habibula deflected and stopped by Smear. Wonderful run from Cameron Habibula, the 19-year-old. Been part of this organization for seven years. And off the deflection, was able to have it on target, but Smear reacted well. So 24 minutes gone, still no score. And an up and down affair to this point. Justin Galanti, our entire outstanding crew here at MLS Next Pro. Thrilled to be with you on a Sunday evening. of 11 matches around MLS Next Pro today and tonight. One of six going on at the moment. Rory O'Driscoll here. Flips it in and what an opportunity for CC Uche, but he was offside anyway, so perhaps not as great of an opportunity as it appeared to be. Uche, a former Ohio State Buckeye. Played four matches last year for Minnesota. This is ninth this season and seventh start. I'll tell you what, Minnesota has not struggled much to create chances tonight without its leading scorer and Diogo Pacheco. Haven't quite finished one yet just hopped over Johnson's foot and a promising build up ends up as a Minnesota throw. Despite the defeat last time against Vancouver, Cameron Knowles said he was actually very pleased with the fight and the battle from his team that night. Felt like they could have gotten more out of that match and hope some of those feelings linger and provide some intensity and motivation for his group tonight. Playing against a very good team that's on a short week, on their home pitch, and starting to get to the point in the year where you can really start giving a look to the table Every point, every two points, and of course every three points you can get, so important with kind of the middle of the Western Conference all bunched up. Only a couple points separating 12th from 5th as we showed you at the start of the show. Vancouver at third place in the table. 
entering the night. Two points behind Austin, who will kick off in about 90 minutes against Portland. One of the hottest teams, maybe the hottest team in the league at the moment. So if Vancouver could walk out of tonight's match with three points and Austin were not to earn any, any then Vancouver would be in second place at the end of the night. Obviously a, a lot that would have to happen. A slip there at midfield by Javi Bula. Springs Minnesota the other way. Dunbar runs it down. You can see Lacey was frustrated in the box, perhaps was hoping the ball would come his way. Shots are now 4-3 in Vancouver's favor, but Minnesota has put three on goal to this point. Vancouver only one. Starting to get into it at the National Sports Center. Minnesota hoping to snap a three match losing streak at the moment. They've played well so far. As has Vancouver, candidly, both teams have been good in creating chances. I would guess both coaches would like to be a, a little tighter defensively and they've been since, or through, the first nearly 29 minutes. Mosquera for O'Driscoll now. Right a bit strong in the touch from Lacey. Again a race for the ball that Johnson's able to win. for Minnesota. We approach the half hour mark. It's a Vancouver group that would like to improve a bit on the road. Not necessarily bad, but at two, three and two, that record doesn't quite match the home mark of 5-1-1. One, one. Very dominant on their home field this year. Abi Bulo is knocked down on a clean challenge. Ahead it comes, wonderful ball, a chance, it stopped! Hassel got his left hand on it and redirected the shot enough so that it hit the post and we remain scoreless. Another wonderful chance in the counter game from Minnesota. But Thomas Hassel makes his fourth save already tonight. He has been fantastic. Cameron Dunbar was absolutely robbed there. So four saves for Hassel on one side. And on the other, Smear has already stopped a penalty. The goalkeeper's stealing the show this evening. Oh. 
Vancouver again. A lot of contact there at midfield in the foul, or in the middle of the field, and the foul goes against Illich. Another look at that last chance. Dunbar finds space and just barely Hustle able to get his left hand on it. Then it deflects off the post. And if you could hear in our crowd, Mike, coaches on the sideline for Minnesota were saying to Dunbar, next one, next one, just move on to that next opportunity. Can't do anything about what just happened. No reason to dwell on it. Alex, Alex Smear sends this one away. There's Iwe. Emmanuel Iwe goes out wide to Bello. Zaydan Bello. Dunbar off the post. Another opportunity just wide. Dunbar off the post, bounced right to Bello, who missed wide. And the chances continue to come for Minnesota. One chance and then another got all the way through, but just outside the post. And you would think MNUFC2 has to feel a little Snake bitten in this first half by all the opportunities they've gotten. In that last sequence, Alaj Ba was given a yellow. There was a little bit of contact, I guess, as the play was going on. Official let them play the advantage, which is why it didn't get shown immediately. Here's Levante Johnson for Vancouver. And he has won another corner. Good work by Levante Johnson. This is where the yellow came. Clearly a lot of contact, but with the advantage, play went on. Great shot there by our camera crew. Javi Bula with the raised hand. Low bounding ball. Deflects off of one. That's Leatherman, and then it's cleared down by Minnesota. 7-5, Vancouver with the overall shots advantage here in the first half, which is more than 35 minutes old. Javi Bula with the second most goals this year for Vancouver with four. By the way, for Levante Johnson, another wonderful performance so far against this opponent. Had a brace earlier in the year against Minnesota. Two of the five goals that night for Vancouver. Hassel, one of three goalkeepers that Vancouver has used this year. All three, him along with Max Anker and Isaac Bomer, signed to the first team. And all have really been excellent this year. Again, for the last eight matches, Whitecaps, too, have not allowed a goal. To the back post, a great run, but Levante Johnson put it over the bar. We've seen Johnson occupy that left side all night, this time unmarked on the right side. And boy, what a golden chance. 
Another deep sigh of relief for the home supporters. Feels like a night where Johnson could, could have a brace already, maybe more than that. You could say the same about guys on the other side, like Dunbar and Lacey, who have just been able to create chance after chance this evening. Johnson couldn't quite get around the defender. O'Driscoll takes a push from Javi Bula. Who didn't like the call. One of those nights where it's hard to imagine based on all the wonderful chances we've seen. Uh, we don't have a goal yet, but the sense has to be that there might be one or even more coming. See if it happens before halftime. It's really interesting hearing Ricardo Clark talk about this new role as the head coach for this group after being an assistant for the first team the last two years. He said his role was really mainly in player development those last two seasons, so this is not a huge change in that realm, but being a head coach is just totally different. Being the main voice, the main leader, the one picking the playing style, trying to find solutions. He's really loved having the opportunity to hone his craft. And obviously, he and his group have been very successful so far this year. Third place in the Western Conference table entering tonight. Only behind Colorado and Austin. Dunbar comes back for this one and plays it to Bello. Now it's O'Driscoll, and he's won a corner here. Third corner for Minnesota. Vancouver's had three as well. Fourteen combined shots in this first half. Six on goal. Let's see if we find another here. Crossing the 40 minute mark. Not the best ball there and easily handled by Vancouver. It's Johansson who got a foot to it immediately. And this will be a goal kick for Thomas Hassel. Guy who's been part of the Vancouver Academy in one way or another for 10 years now, 2013. Back when he was just 10 years old. And for Vancouver, the thing that is really impressive is all three goalkeepers that it has used this year that have all been so successful all came through their academy. So homegrown, developed players. Leatherman trying to go over the top with it. Bula for Johnson. Now for Johnston, and he's won a corner. A combination of Levante Johnson and Malcolm Johnston. 
both picked in the top 30 of the most recent draft. Johnson out of Syracuse, Johnston out of Maryland, who was actually drafted by NYCFC. Didn't quite work out there. Signed with Vancouver in February. Carlos Leatherman was shown a yellow here. See him picking up the ball and just throwing it away. So an obvious yellow for delaying the game there. And the corner was played short. Ends up being a throw for Vancouver. Illich, dangerous, Smear was out of position, but luckily for him, the ball ended up in the corner. Almost a problem there. Levante Johnson into Smear, who smothers it. Both Alex Smear and Thomas Hassall have been excellent tonight in goal. Really the only reason that this is Still a scoreless match into the 44th minute. There's Bello. To the middle it comes, O'Driscoll in towards Dunbar. Good passing here, O'Driscoll, oh, what a stop. Hustle robs another. Oh my goodness, O'Driscoll thought he absolutely had him beat and that left fingertip keeps it out of the net once again. Hassel has been otherworldly in this first half. Corner for Minnesota. Another poor ball there. Ends up on Dunbar's foot anyway. Dunbar back to his right. Sends it in. On marked man and Lacey put it right into Hassel. I mean, just a brick wall and net. It looked like that would be more of a dangerous chance than it was. The shot was sort of right at him, but he still had to stop it. Now Habibula for Levante Johnson. Getting onto his right foot. Johnson trying to stay with it. Eventually Minnesota was able to get the ball away from him. I'll tell you what. As the fourth official shows one minute of added time. Hard to imagine there's been a performance as good as this one from Hassel by any goalkeeper around the, the league this year. See if we have a couple final actions before the break. It's really been an outstanding first half in Minnesota. Vancouver looking to keep moving forward. Instead, they play it back. See how long this one runs on. Abi Bula controlling near the sideline. And there's the whistle for halftime. What a first 45 minutes. Chances aplenty on both sides, but neither able to convert. Both goalkeepers absolutely sublime. And it's 0-0 at the break at the National Sports Center Stadium in Blaine, Minnesota. Fans, Major League Soccer and RCX Sports have launched MLS Go, a groundbreaking recreational soccer program. 
Boys and girls aged four to 14 can now experience a fun, affordable, and local soccer journey. This fall, MLS Go, MLS Go debuts in 18 markets, expanding access to the sport. You can go to MLSGo.com for more information. We will have highlights and stats from our first half coming up. But first, Michelle and Samara take us through Match Day 12 with this week's edition of the Match Day Rewind. MLS Next Pro's Match Day 12 kicked off Thursday alongside Messi Mania. Alongside Samara, I'm Michelle here with the biggest moments from the week. The Messi effect definitely had a positive impact on our Inter Miami 2 boys. The team's Instagram follower count skyrocketed since Messi's move to MLS was reported. And it seems that the news also inspired Federico Higuain's squad, who went unbeaten this weekend with a 3-1 victory over FC Cincinnati 2 and a 1-1 draw against TFC 2. The Herons continue racking up points and followers. And the craziness of the week carried on over into Huntsville. Jonathan Bolaños with a goal just nine seconds into their match. Now, you might think that's the fastest goal in league history, but actually it ties Crew 2's Marco Micheletto for fastest. And afterwards, Jack Collison was just really proud of the way his team responded, especially after last week. And it's disappointing to concede two poor goals again, but a big part about this group is development. We talk about development a lot and learning from mistakes from last week, not to go behind even further. And we're coming at half time and we, we knew we were really in the game. I said to them, do you feel like we can win the game? And they all said yes. Also finding the back of the net in Huntsville City FC's 4-2 win over St. Louis City 2, Adam Seapeach. At just 18 years old, the forward became the first Nashville SC Academy player to start and score for the organization. In turn, he was rewarded with a first team contract as the club's first ever homegrown player. Speaking of braces, NYCFC 2's Piero Elias scored one of his own. The midfielder's first goals of the season led his team to a 3-1 victory against city rivals Red Bulls 2. With the win, Matt Pilkington side even this year's Hudson River Derby Series and is now rolling on four straight wins. The boys in blue also reached 24 goals on the season to position themselves as the top four best offense in the East. And the streaks just continue. Rapids 2 extending their unbeaten streak to 12 in a row thanks to a 1-0 win over LAFC 2 over the weekend. If you had to guess, who the lone goal came from, and you guessed Yosuke Hanya, yet yeah, you would be correct. He was absolutely swarmed by defenders and still managed to find the back of the net off of his left foot. He's now up to nine goals on the season, still good for first place in the Golden Boot standings. We're inching closer to the halfway point of the season, so the competition is getting more fierce. Michelle and I will see you back here with the top moments from Match Day 13. Halftime at the National Sports Center Stadium in Blaine, Minnesota. No score between Minnesota United 2 and Whitecaps FC 2. The focus of the best of week 12 is next as Michelle has the spotlight. Four days of calls for a lot of standout performances. I'm Michelle with MLS Next Pro, bringing you your Match Day 12 players in the spotlight. Starting us off is your rising star of Match Day 12. It is none other than Union 2's Christopher Only Jr. 16-year-old scored the lone goal in Union 2's match against Atlanta United 2 to hand his team their second win in their last three games. The goal marked his third on the season to go with his three assists so far. On top of this honor, his impact all over the field also secured him Man of the Match honors. The MLS Next Pro Player of Match Day 12 with a similarly impressive performance to last week's honoree. This week it is Huntsville City FC's 
Kemi Amici, who netted two goals just three minutes apart. The midfielder's brace, alongside his single assist, accounted for three of the team's four goals. That helped HCFC mount the 4-2 comeback needed to secure just their second win of the season. His impact coming in as a substitute in the 31st minute proved the difference in this one. Now, as for the best goal of match day 12, there were certainly a lot of stunners to choose from, but this one has to go to LA Galaxy 2's Alex Alcala. The forward with a quick pass then pointing to the exact spot of where he wanted the ball, Amadine with the perfect assist and the ball through traffic, finding the back of the net. Alcala earned exactly 50% of the vote for best goal across all matches. Rounding out the Match Day 12 honorees, your team in the spotlight is Orlando City B. Their four-goal shutout over FC Cincinnati 2 featured four different young Lions finding the back of the net. Jack Lim got the scoring started with his seventh goal of the season, while Captain Juninho netted a free kick, earning him a nomination for Best Goal of the Week. While he didn't walk away with that honor, his team did earn this one while extending their unbeaten streak at home this season in the process. Another big week of action coming up, 21 games across Match Day 13. We'll see you right back here next week for Who's in the Spotlight. Back at the National Sports Center Stadium in Blaine, Minnesota. It's halftime and we are scoreless in the second meeting of the year and final meeting of the regular season between Whitecaps FC2 and Minnesota United 2. All but one match this week was decided by more than one goal. Let's look back at a wild week in MLS Next Pro. David Paraba, the captain, scoring the lone goal for Crown Legacy FC two weeks ago. Looking to continue his momentum, two goals and two assists on the year. And Yuri Tavares, the left winger. In the center circle. Now flipping it back out. Headed away is Lapkiss. And now an open net. Oh! -ho! Taken away by Roberts. On the far side, chance for an equalizer. Off of it and a goal! Pass, atop the arc, Dushan, kicks out, fires, goal! Filipovic went down, and that's gonna do it. Columbus Crew 2, a 2-1 win. Time to take a look at the starting 11, first for Kenny Bundy's group, and he talked about how his team had a very professional performance. Shannon Murray said that he's had this group consistently the last couple weeks, and he has Ryan Bilichuk in net. It will be Yair Gonzalez off of the post, into the net. Ikoba, Ikoba pass the defender. Take a Koba! Monzon to put Portland ahead. He's pure on it. Here's your final chance. Into the box, headed. Off Ray, Murata was open. There's your final whistle. Timbers two, makes it four consecutive wins. He starts Jacob Castro in goal, just his second appearance of the year. Elias Katsaros, Hal Uderitz. How about Alenis Vargas with some space and speed? Alenis Vargas puts it in front, it's knocked down. Ball is loose, they score. Big opportunity generated in the early moments by Tacoma. Rodriguez, Rodilio Rodriguez to his left foot, cross in front, and it's in! Didn't happen for them last week against San Jose. Can they make it happen tonight? Herrera, saved by Polskamp. 2-2 two, two after three rounds. Ozzy Cisneros now had the first goal this evening for Kansas City. And Cisneros converts. And again, a must score situation for Tacoma. 
a native of Pickering, Canada, a 29-year-old between the pipes for the home team tonight. Nick Law, 35 years old in the middle. You heard that right. Bolaños crosses. Kicked in, goal! Joe Ash calls for it in the middle. Cross track, there it is! Third time to charm. Moments away from Huntsville's first ever road win. Jesus Batiste, long goal from the left side. That stings for Huntsville, probably not gonna affect the outcome. It does not, it's a final. To Steve Cook, this will be his start in 11. Getting his first start of the season will be Justin Roberts. Roberts, nice ball forward, tipped up. And this is gonna be put in for the opening goal of the game. Toronto, that one also will be kicking at 7 p.m. Eastern. Firmino from long range, upper oh, corner. Gannon, Poussin, crossing it back, the shot, oh, and it finds the corner. It's Brent on his young feet. Morales sends it up and over, and now another chance for Columbus to close it out. Gannon, the strike. And he gets it by Garces, and Columbus will take two points at home as they win in the penalty shootout by a score of six to five. A couple of changes. Jared Salazar will play in the midfield. Teo Enrique, as well as Yekar Perlaza in the starting 11. The visitors will come out in a 4 2 3 1 as well. It may look like a 4 4 2 at times because this is a group dealing with a number of personnel changes. Eight changes specifically from their starting 11 last. Vargas did a great job of looking to break lines and take advantage in transition. Then it was a well-slotted ball, just unfortunately a little too far in front to where Ochoa was able to collect. And another chance off the post! Still not out of pressure or quakes too as that one goes over the end line for a corner kick. Now here comes San Jose, Wende Jr. in transition. Down into the left corner, sends a ball across. Shot on goal! Back on the attack, shot blocked. Pondeka looking to break through. So great stuff from around MLS Next Pro this week, and we had a great first half tonight in Minnesota. Chances, well, they were all over the place. Minnesota was constantly pressuring Thomas Hassall, the goalkeeper for Vancouver, who was incredible. He made six saves in that first half. And his team, Vancouver, created plenty of chances as well. None bigger than this one. Levante Johnson taken down in the box, gets the penalty kick and stopped by Alex Smear. Johnson couldn't get much on the rebound. And Vancouver did not have many chances after that in terms of shots and shots on goal. Just kind of missing on that last pass, that last effort to be able to put one on target. You can see here, a lot of space in the box, and then more of the work from Hassel in that first half. This time, a clean challenge. Minnesota wanted a penalty there, didn't get the call. Fairly easy save for Smear, and then some incredible stuff from Hassel. Got that one with his left fingertips, and then off the post. And then a little bit later in that first half, one off the post, second shot just wide. On the Vancouver end, Johnson had a wonderful opportunity off a great run, couldn't put it on target. And then O'Donnell, or I should say O'Driscoll, thought he had one there and Hassel denied him with the left hand. And this in the final moments, Hassel another save. One of six that he had in the first half. Possession was even, shots were even overall. Minnesota was a little more accurate with its shots, but you can see all those numbers. 
indicated it was a close first half and that's exactly what it was. And now we'll see what we get in half number two, second meeting of the year between Minnesota and Vancouver. Remember in the first meeting, it was tied at half, 2-2, two -two, not 0-0, zero -zero, but a tied match at half and Vancouver went on to score all three goals in the second half and win 5-2. So we'll see if we get a similar script tonight or something a little different between these two. Vancouver third in the Western Conference entering the night. Minnesota, part of a log jam in the middle of the league, tied for 11th coming into this evening, but only a couple points out of fifth. Second half underway. If you're just joining us, Minnesota in the home, all gray kits, and it's the white with the blue shorts for Vancouver on the road. Here in Minnesota, one, two, and one at home. Vancouver, two, three, and two on the road. Here comes Vancouver on the early attack. Shot got deflected. And now running it down in the corner is Levante Johnson. Levante Johnson had that PK stopped in the first half, going up against Leatherman, who has a yellow already. Ball comes in. Spinning in, gets all the way through. Spinning and shooting was Antoine Coupland, and Smear makes his third save. Good little burst to start the second half for Vancouver, a group that has started matches a little slow this year, but has been excellent in the second half. We'll see if we get more of that from Ricardo Clark's group tonight. Look at this control by Coupland, won the ball, spun and shot on target. But Smear had that near post covered. Ricardo Clark, of course, an illustrious playing career. Three-time MLS All-Star, played for the U.S. men's national team at the 2010 World Cup. And I asked him, how do you use your playing experience to help you as a head coach, especially with a young team? And he said, I try not to, this cross comes in and gets deflected away and eventually cleared. He said, I try not to talk about my playing career too much, but I just use it to relate to my players as best as possible, knowing that I had so many, if not all of the experiences in my career that they're going through at the moment. Dunbar couldn't get a pass through there. Alaj Ba. Sent back towards midfield. Smear. And played down by Cameron Lacey. Minnesota enters the attacking third, and is that a corner? It is. Fifth corner of the night coming for Minnesota. Vancouver with four to this point. This has been about as offensive of a 0-0 match as you could possibly imagine at this point in the 49th minute. Cameron Dunmar, the 20-year-old to take this. In swinging ball, ends up on the left foot there of Uche, couldn't get a shot through. And this sent well wide by Zaydan Bella. Dunbar was acquired as a homegrown player in November from LA Galaxy. Made 18 career first team appearances with LA before coming to Minnesota. So young still at 20 years old. 
Two appearances prior to tonight with MNUFC2 and two goals. Plenty of time to try and find another this evening. Both these teams are going to have matches in the middle of the week coming up. Both will play on Thursday for Vancouver. They will be home for LAFC2. And for Minnesota, it will be a road trip to St. Louis. It'll be the first midweek match in a while for Minnesota. One thing that Cameron Knowles pointed out in our conversation with this week was that it's been so valuable even though it's not really showing up in the results it's been incredible for his group to get on this normal cadence the last month or so of just one match a week on Sunday really allows them time to recover reflect train evaluate their performances because at times like coming up the matches come very quick and you don't have as much time for that Johnson's ball in, handled by Smear. He was looking for Joe Hansen, who was making a run in. Tremendous, tremendous performances by both goalkeepers tonight. Sideline there by Lucas Dasovich. 20 year old who's come up through the Vancouver Academy. Played four matches last year for Whitecaps 2. And this one, his seventh this season. He started six of those as one goal came in the Minnesota victory back in late April. Both coaches expected a very Competitive match tonight, much different than that first meeting. And through nearly 52 minutes, they've both been correct in that assessment. I guess that prognostication. Another corner coming for Minnesota. Off the foot of Cameron Dunbar. Dunbar plays this one a bit shorter. Uche lays it back and a drive is stopped. Zaydan Bello once again can't quite get it past Hassel. He tries to start play quickly the other way, which he's done a couple times looking for this man, Levante Johnson, but Carlos Leatherman defended the play well there. And now a hard collision between Leatherman and Malcolm Johnston there. Another look at this stop on Bello by Hassel. And now Johnston getting a talking to here after that last sequence. Johnston, the 26th pick in the most recent draft out of Maryland by NYCFC, ended up signing with Vancouver in February. This is his 10th appearance, seventh start this year. With Whitecaps two, had a goal in their 2-2 tie on May 28th against LA Galaxy. Dunbar turns and moves forward with it. Alfro Driscoll. Manuel Iwe for O'Driscoll once again. Juan Mosquera ahead with it. And he wins another corner for Minnesota. 
third corner in the first nine plus minutes of the second half for MNU FC2. Trying to convert on one of these. They have not gotten extremely good chances off the previous six tonight. Dunbar in swinging ball. Kumu is able to get it out of trouble. Zaydan Bello in the middle for Cedric Ball. Now they lay it back. Minnesota hoping to stop a three match losing streak at a stretch where they've given up four goals in four of the last five matches. The sheet is clean tonight, which has to make Cameron Knowles happy, albeit they've given up some good chances. They've also created some very good chances. Levante Johnson with speed again. And Johnson has won a corner, I believe. No, they're gonna say the last touch was his. Well defended by Cedric Bowe. Another great story for Minnesota. Cedric was signed from an open tryout. And in an appearance with the first team in the Open Cup, scored a goal. Has an assist so far with MNU FC 2. trying to run this down. Hassal just barely. Tonight, a scoreless match to this point. Foul there on Vasco Fry. So Driscoll got knocked down. Comes up holding his left side of his face. going to be the side that breaks through on one of these chances. Both have had so many tonight. Or will anyone break through on one of these chances? Good step forward by Bo to win the ball. O'Driscoll tried to get it through to Dunbar but couldn't quite do it. Leatherman for Dunbar again. Cameron Dunbar getting some space in this well high and wide. And Dunbar goes down after that last attempt. Didn't look like there was much contact. And he's back up to his feet quickly, which is great to see. up strong there and wins the ball back for Minnesota. Impressive night from the 18 year old Carlos Leatherman played in 17 matches last or 20 matches last year as a 17 year old. Dunbar's cross off a deflection and another corner for Minnesota. Low 
ball this time and cleared once again fairly easily by Vancouver. Eight corners tonight for Minnesota. Haven't gotten much off them. Zaydon Bello trying to keep the ball here. It was forced away from him. Good work by Habibula. Vancouver has not had all that much of the ball in this second half. They had a very good scoring chance early, but not much since. A good run here, though. Ball gets tied up as O'Driscoll and Darko Illich got tied up with one another. And eventually, Minnesota took the ball back. Dunbar plays this out to the wide side. Emmanuel Iwe getting back to his right foot. Iwe still on it. It was poked away from him though. Hobby Bula operating through a trio of defenders. Got it free to Dasevich. Past the one hour mark now. And no foul there as three bodies were going down to the turf. Minnesota has had the better of possession in the second half. And now 54% of it for the night. After things were 50-50 in that category at half. By the way, we mentioned so much going on around the league today. There was one match on Friday, a 1-0 win for San Jose over North Texas. A couple subs coming in here for Vancouver. Giovanni Aguilar is in, as well as Christian Greco-Taylor. So first subs used tonight. But San Jose got the three points against North Texas on Friday. Three matches already complete today. Red Bulls and Crown Legacy a 1-1 tie. And Crown Legacy got the extra point in the shootout. Cincinnati a 2-1 winner against New England. Chicago a wonderful performance, a 5-2 win against Philadelphia and then four matches outside of this one in progress at the moment. Huntsville up 1-0 over Miami in the second half. Columbus up 2-1 on NYCFC in the second. Atlanta, Toronto, no score in the second. And Kansas City a 1-0 lead on LAFC fairly early on, just in the 19th minute. And then three matches later on tonight. Colorado and Tacoma should be a really good one. That's at 8.30 Eastern, 5.30 Pacific. At 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, Austin and Portland. I told you earlier, that's the second place team against maybe the hottest team in the league. And then rounding things out at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, Salt Lake will take on St. Louis. Seven ten shots advantage for Minnesota. Seven three on goal for the home side. Seven saves for Thomas Hassall tonight. O'Driscoll got tripped up, and the foul is against Juan Mosquera. Excuse me, it was Coupland who got tripped up. And now he's a little slow to return to his feet. Coupland now able to return to his feet.
Free kick coming for Vancouver. Bula and Coupland stand over this one. It is Coupland to the back post. It's a dangerous ball, but nothing put on target. First touch on it came from Matteo Campagna. And now Leatherman able to clear it out of trouble. Now O'Driscoll back the other way. Tries to switch the field here. Dunbar runs under it. Cameron Dunbar in front and directed on target. Not with much steam on it though. Remember how dangerous both sides were on those counter attacks in the first half. Haven't seen as much in the second. Good job there by Coupland, who's all over the place right now. And this taken by Smear as he re restarts play the other way. Both goalkeepers very comfortable starting play through their feet. They've started some good buildups on both sides this evening. Here's Dunbar. Things starting to get a, a little more physical. Could be as the players get a, a little more tired. Things get a little sloppier. Only a couple subs have been used so far by Vancouver. Minnesota has not made any yet. As we get to 67 minutes gone. Spins his way around the defender. Cross to the top, O'Driscoll over the bar. Wonderful chance. Eway found O'Driscoll right at the top of the 18. But Rory O'Driscoll, who was bidding for a goal in a second consecutive match, just sent it well high. Still 0-0. Remember this match, I think the way it's been played, but not the score, characteristic of Minnesota's matches this year. There's Cameron Dunbar again. Dunbar to his left foot. Splits a couple, got tripped up, but it's a clean challenge. And now Johnson takes it back the other way. Now the reason I say that is Minnesota's given up the most goals in the league. They've scored the fourth most. And tonight has been that kind of match with tons of chances to score. But the fact that it's 0-0 at this point is very unusual for a match Minnesota is involved in. Fans Tonight's broadcast is presented by Alina Health, official healthcare provider of MNUFC2. Be a throw here for Vancouver, trying to get a result on the road here tonight. Something that's never easy to do. A misplay in the box there, and no foul. Vancouver was asking for a second penalty tonight, but it is not granted. 
remember Johnson had that PK stopped by Smear back in the first half. Lacey couldn't get to that ball. It's so interesting when you talk with really every coach in this league. They mention the parity, especially among the Western Conference coaches and how difficult that makes it to get any kind of result on the road. So when they kind of evaluate their teams, I feel like everyone you talk to, they say, yeah, we could have gotten more out of X match, Y match on the road. But if we get a point, even if we feel like we could have gotten more, we have to be happy with that because it's not easy. Johnson forward. Is that a hand? It's not. Vancouver wanted it. Aguilar was begging for it. But play goes on. Dunbar. Big chance for Iwe. And Iwe scores. A 71st minute breakthrough from Emmanuel Iwe. A wonderful last pass from Lacey. Iwe tees it up and does not miss. And finally, Minnesota breaks through. And what a change in emotion on the other end of the pitch. Vancouver thought there was a hand in the box, thought they should have been awarded a penalty. It was not granted and perhaps got a little caught off guard Asking about that call, let's take another look at it. This is Aguilar, and they were asking for it. No call given, and just seconds later, Minnesota is able to score. How about that? Substitution about to come for Vancouver. Joe Hansen is off and he'll be replaced by Glory Amanda, making his 13th appearance of the year. And only the third time he's come off the bench. Generally, he's been a starter for Vancouver, which now trails by a goal in the 73rd minute. So for Iwe, his fourth goal of the year, and his first in the last four matches, and Cameron Lacey gets his second assist of the year. Had a brace two matches ago against Portland, and now an assist, so Lacey, the 22-year-old, played collegiately at Charlotte, continues to perform well. Now here's Dunbar again. Another good ball for Iwe, and it's cleared away, but Minnesota continuing to threaten now. They've won another corner here. the goal scorer to take this. Not cleared yet. Oh, a lot of contact there. No call though. And now finally we get a whistle. And what's the call gonna be? Oh, they've awarded a penalty. Oh my goodness. A yellow is shown here to Hassel, and you could see the entire Vancouver team 
incredulous at the moment. You can see Uche gets just hammered down there by Vasco Fry. And the official let play go on for a few moments and then eventually makes the call for the penalty. Frankly, I felt like it was the right call, perhaps just a, a little late. And Hassall continues to plead his case here. Well, either way, there's no changing it now. And Hassall, who's now got a yellow, is going to have to make a save to frankly keep Vancouver alive. A 0-0 match could be about to turn to 2-0 in the course of about five minutes. It will be Cameron Lacey to take this. Just had the assist on the Eway goal back in the 71st minute. He has that ball a bit too, ball, too far forward, which was what Hassall was not happy with, and now he moves it forward again. And here we go. Cameron Lacey. 2-0, Minnesota. Hassall guessed to his right, shot went to his left, and in a matter of moments, two goals for Minnesota, which is now not too far away from picking up a massive three points against a very good opponent on its home pitch. Vasco Fry was also issued a yellow in that sequence for the foul in the box. That led to the penalty. So 2-0 now in the 78th minute. A goal and an assist for Cameron Lacey this evening. And things all of a sudden looking a bit dire for Vancouver, which appeared to be in a pretty good spot about six minutes ago. We've seen comebacks like this in this league before, this year especially, but they're always surprising when they happen at this juncture of the night. Aguilar plays it back, and it ends up on Dunbar's foot. Lacey sending this one forward. Lacey crosses it. Oh, what an opportunity. Zaydon Bello just could, could, couldn't quite put it on target. Seems like Minnesota's really humming right now. Another great ball from Lacey. Perhaps an ounce less weight on it. And Bello might have been able to redirect it the way he wanted it to. Foul here against Cedric Bow. As he took Javi Bula down. Those two still battling here. Javi Bula able to keep the ball. 79 minutes gone, 2-0 Minnesota. Both goals coming in the last 10 minutes.
Throw here for Carlos Leatherman. Not too much time remaining for Vancouver to work with. See the Vancouver players starting to get frustrated here. Free kick coming. who had the first goal will take this. Iway puts it on target, but the stop is made by Hassan. A man who does not deserve to have two goals against his line tonight. He has been absolutely fantastic. That was his eighth save. Iway in the 71st minute, Lacey on the PK in the 77th. The two goals tonight for Minnesota. Now we'll get a substitution as Molik Khan is in. And Zaydan Bello will take a rest. Khan on and Bello off. First sub of the night there for Minnesota. Both teams have a couple guys nicked up. So a little thin on the players they normally use. And specifically Minnesota without its leading scorer, Diogo Pacheco tonight. And they have been wonderful creating chances. And finally, saw all of the hard work pay off with two goals. And now perhaps minutes away from earning a huge three points tonight. Again, Minnesota entered the night 11th in the West with 16 points as another save is made by Hassel on Lacey. If Minnesota earns three tonight, you jump from 16 points to 19 points, which would, at least at the moment, things could change, but for now, move you from 11th to 7th in the West. Dunbar, by the way, just continues to have a great night. Once again, forcing Hassal to make a save. It's another corner here. This is the 10th of the night. First head to it was Lucas Dasevich for Vancouver. And now a foul against Vancouver. Substitution for Whitecaps FC2 in the 84th minute. Checking in the game number 78, Edwin Espinal. Edwin Espinal is now in for Vancouver, ending the night for Alaj Ba. Espinal, the 18 year old, joined Vancouver's academy back in 2021 from the Blaze Soccer Academy. Free kick here for Dunbar. 85th minute. Plays it short for Eway. Running forward. And who touched that last? Looks like it was a Vancouver player, so another corner 
for Minnesota. You can see Dasovic trying to expedite this process, throwing a ball over there. Dunbar will use the one that he retrieved though. The outlook starting to look bleak for Vancouver on the road here. Dunbar, a dangerous ball, comes all the way through. Uche controls it. And Minnesota content to just keep possession here. And with the clock as your friend, ahead by two goals, always a good decision. Six minutes gone. Leatherman for Driscoll. Sends it ahead for Dunbar who runs it down. Dunbar into the box for Lacey, controlling it. Lacey's shot was stopped by a defender. He leaves it back and another save by Hassall. My goodness. To say that Hassel has done his part tonight would be just a monster understatement. He has been outstanding. Unless something changes very quickly, it appears it'll come in a losing effort. Good step forward to win the ball there. Juan Mosquera. And he is called for the foul. Tried to play it forward. Ends up right back with him. And a clean challenge there, I guess, from Vasco Frog. He knocked Dunbar down. Cross comes in and handled by Alex Smear who is perhaps just minutes away from a clean sheet in his first appearance of the year. Now the players starting to have some conversations with each other. This match has gotten more physical as the night has gone along. So Cameron Lacey comes off and Cooper Lejewski is on for his fourth appearance. Lacey with a goal and an assist tonight. A huge reason it looks like Minnesota is going to walk out of here with three points. Trying to get to 5-5-3 five, five, and three on the year and 19 points. And Coomber appears as if it will fall to seven, five, and three and stick it 26 points. Unless something massively changes in the final moments here. And they're gonna show a red here. To Christian Greco Taylor. Yeah, 
Wow. Red tag ejection issued to Whitecaps FC 2's number 84, Christian Greco Taylor. And it looked like it was more the AR than the head ref that was the one who made that decision. Frankly, didn't see all that much from Greco Taylor. So perhaps he said something, but either way, he is sent off. And to make matters worse for Vancouver, which is down two goals, they're now down a, down a man. Fourth official indicated three minutes of added time. And in fact, the fourth official is indicated will be a minimum of three minutes of stoppage time in the second half. A red card to Greco Taylor for abusive language. That is, in fact, what it was. And he is sent off. And now, because that last kind of break with the red card being given, it's going to be four minutes of added time. One minute was almost already gone by the time we got restarted. Corner coming for Vancouver. Played quickly and cleared just as quickly by Minnesota. MNUFC two moments away from snapping a three match losing streak. And with all the goals that Minnesota has conceded lately, I think Cameron Knowles is going to be as happy with the clean sheet as he is with the win. Hassall has to come out and play this away from Dunbar. Leatherman. Oh, what a run by Carlos Leatherman. Still on his foot. Leatherman all the way in for Dunbar. And another save by Hassel. He gets the ball knocked from him. The shot goes off the bar. Iwe sends it over the bar. What a scramble sequence there. And somehow there wasn't a goal. <laughs> Leatherman took it almost the length of the pitch. Finally lays it off. Dunbar's shot stopped. A meaning at the top there, and it falls right to Lejewski, who hit the crossbar. Wow, is really all you can say. That was something else. Final minute or so in Minnesota. Javi Bula. A good step forward to take the ball away. Jeremy Rodas. This is Lejewski again. And the flag comes up, Lejewski offside. Final moments here. for Vancouver. Perhaps one more march forward for the visitors. Vasco Fry. Leatherman takes a shove. And we'll see if that pretty much does it. Alex Smear will come all the way off his line. <laughs> and 
And that's all tonight. Minnesota United 2. A wonderful performance, a 2-0 winner against Vancouver. And a massive three points for Minnesota tonight on its home pitch. A match that was scoreless until the 71st minute. Emmanuel Iwe scored. And then Cameron Lacey added another goal about six minutes later on a PK. And it's a 2-0 win for Minnesota. Now it's time for our Adidas Man of the Match. Tonight's Man of the Match is Cameron Lacey from Minnesota United 2. A goal and an assist. Lacey, our Man of the Match, presented by Adidas. MNUFC 2 now 19 points, 5-5-3, five, five, and three. Whitecaps 2. Still 26 points, seven, five, and three. That'll wrap things up for us from Minnesota for our entire MLS Next Pro broadcast crew. I'm Justin Galanti. Once again, our final score, Minnesota two, Vancouver nothing. Don't forget, you can watch MLS Next Pro all season long at MLS Season Pass on Apple TV and MLSNextPro.com. Have a good night, everyone. This copyrighted broadcast of MLS Next Pro may not be retransmitted, reproduced, or rebroadcasted without the express written consent of Major League Soccer.